classic three-figure bearing problem in trigonometry. Which, and if, it's, if you're doing it in trigonometry, it means you're going to set up a right angle triangle somewhere. Let's see. Plane flies between two country airfields. Its destination is... So we have to, so that's the, we're going to use that piece of information, 18.4 kilometers south and 27.3 kilometers west. Right, a bit of English here of its origin. So you might, you might, uh, you might have to think a bit about what that actually means. Its destination. So basically, what you can think of is we're starting somewhere, then we've got a destination. So this is where we're going. Destination's going here, and it says its destination is a certain distance south and a certain distance west of its origin. So your origin is basically, let's just put, put a starting point. And, we, and what you do is you break it down into steps for your diagram. Now, you've got north, south, east and west here. So as we've already said, north is always the top of your page. So you're going to, so that end means that you're going to end up getting parallel lines if you draw north lines in. All we know is it's 18.4 kilometers south. So if we start here, we go due south for a certain distance. And that distance is 18.4 kilometers. And then we go west. Okay, so okay, I'll have to reposition this. And that happens sometimes because once you start, you suddenly figure out, wait, I haven't got enough space on my page. Start, because so, I'm actually going to go west. Remember, west end would be over here, this would be east, and this would be north, just as if it was a map. So, there's my north line. First of all, I'm going to go south this distance. 18.4 kilometers. And then it says, I also go a certain distance west. Now you don't, you don't actually draw the west line up here. Think about this, you can think about this journey as being broken down into two stages where you actually go, you actually go south and then you actually go west. So you actually do it like, you can do it like that. 27.3 kilometers west. Now the important thing obviously is if you do north, south, east and west, you've got lots of right angles. In there. So this is so we know this is going to be a right angle. Now the plane obviously doesn't go down here and then across here. It goes diagonally. And the nice thing about that then is triangle with a right angle in it. It's Sokotoa. We can use Sokotoa to find angles. Now you have to mark in your diagram what information you're looking for. Find to the nearest degree the bearing on which on which the plane flies. So if it was starting here. Your plane is obviously flying down here to the next airport. So the three-figure bearing is going to be the angle going all the way around here to here. Now we already know part of that angle, this part here, how many degrees is that? So what you can now do in that question, you can break it down so that this is what we really need to find. We need to know what that angle is and then add it to 180. So what we can do is we can say, well, wait a minute, we've got a right angle triangle. We want to find this angle. Let's just use Sokotoa. So this angle is looking at this opposite side here. That's the opposite. Then we've obviously got our hypotenuse opposite the right angle and the adjacent. So let's write down the magic word. What do we know? We know the, op we know the opposite and the adjacent. So obviously... We're going to be using this one. Hands up if the tan ratio is your favourite ratio. Just out of interest. Okay. Okay. All right. So we want to use. The, it doesn't matter if you use a smaller or a capital letter T. I actually tend to use T out of habit. Capital T. Tan theta equals opposite over adjacent. With the tan ratio, when you do this, it's the only one where you can sometimes get an answer bigger, that you can get a number bigger than one on this side for your ratio. It's only tan that that happens with. So there we go, that's it. And I'm, I'm almost there now. There's not much more to do here. All I need to do is I can say the angle is going to be the inverse tan of 
this calculation. I wouldn't separate this calculation into two stages, and I have to do it to the nearest degree. Problem? Is it the wrong way around? Have I done it the wrong way around? Is it over eight? Oh, well spotted. And in fact, interestingly enough there, well spotted there, that's what, exactly what I was talking about, the tan ratio, opposite over adjacent, 27.3 over. We're actually going to get a number for our tan ratio which is bigger than one. And, it's, and only, that only happens with tan, it doesn't happen with anything else. So we pull up the calculator. And so you see the key thing is just to get that diagram and then figure out what angle you need to calculate. Right, I need to always set this into degrees first. That's what we're, what we're using. And we want to do inverse tan. And I can just do that inside the brackets. It'll do it all for me in one step. And the, yeah, the classic thing is, that's not going to be your final answer, so watch out for that. That's the answer for the angle. Let's just push it over there, 56 degrees to the nearest degree. So we know that this is 56 degrees in here now. But remember, we want to know the three-figure bearing. That's right, so we need to add it. So, uh, okay, my answer was approximately 56 degrees. So I can say that the bearing is 180 plus 56. Just do that in my head. Two, three, six degrees. Now notice I don't say 236 degrees. With three figure bearings, you actually read each figure two, three, six, on a bearing of two, three, six degrees. And that is how you do it. So the crucial thing is get this diagram drawn, get that north line in, identify the angle that you need to calculate using Sokotoa, and then at the very end, add it all together, and you will be successful.